So we're back with Jordan again, and the only difference is now Jordan is earning $2.43 a week. And now we want to think about how much he earns after 10 weeks. So we're going to have to think about what to do to figure this out. So mm -hmm. really, we still want to set up the problem the same. We have $2.43 times 10, and we just want to think about this idea. When you multiply a decimal by either tens or hundreds, thousands, etc., you simply just shift that decimal to the right, the mm -hmm. number of zeros in the numbers. So we, we practiced that in the last learning goal. The only difference is our decimal is just in a different spot. So yeah. we're going to apply the that same rule. So the end. No. Yeah. So we're going to apply that same rule. So we still have $2, $2 well, yeah, you can even think about it, 243 times 1. And then you can think about that your, you can think about one how zero. you have one zero, so you're just going to shift that over. Here's our zero, and we're just going to shift our decimal over one place value them. So now we want to have, since it's we're dealing with money, we want to think about how then it's $24.30. Yeah. And that is really the only idea, that shift in mm -hmm. our decimal. That's all you have to think about. So, um, we're going to try this again. Now, same thing. Jordan is earning $2.43 a week. Now we're going to think about after a 1,000 weeks, which is a really long time again, how mm. much will Jordan have earned? So we're going to apply that same idea. So we have $2.43, and let's see here. We have one, two, three zeros. So you're going to want to think about that with your shift again. So... Here we have 243, and here's our decimal originally. We're going to think about how we have one, two, three zeros. So we're going to move our decimal one, and two, and three. And of course, just as a placeholder, we want to tack on that zero there. Mm -hmm. So um, now we see that Jordan has earned 2,430. dollars. Right. And the decimal, if you notice, went like... It jumped down, and there was that one empty like swoop. That's where we fill in that zero. So it is important to try, at least until you really get the hang of it, mm -hmm. write those little things in. No one's going to mark it wrong if you do. Right? Right. It's better to get the right answer. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so since we're just practicing that idea of decimals, we don't have any where you pause and try. These are just right on your own, right away. Yeah. So if you need to review, go back and review. Um, and then take a moment to try to solve these four problems, thinking about that idea of zeros. Write the equation out again? Yes. Mm -hmm. That way we can go over it in groups and you know exactly what problem we're talking about. And then we got a little bit more, so come on back when you're done. Okay, the next part is what happens if you're multiplying with something that's not so nice and neat as a 10. So <laughs> in this example, Susanna makes 50 cents for every chore she accomplishes, and she does five chores. So how much would she make? So again, you know enough about story problems to know you have to multiply the two. So if we multiply 50 cents times 5, how do we do that? And luckily for you, there are steps to do it. So you're going to write these down. Yes. Yay! <laughs> so write these down um, so you can have them to refer back to. But the first thing that I, <clears throat> that I usually do is I just ignore the decimal. So pretend the decimal's not there and I'm worrying about 50 and 5. So if I need to multiply 50 times 5, and we learned that in learning goal 1. Mm -hmm. So 250. 5 times 5 is 25, and then you add a 0 from the end. The second thing you do now is count the number of places that are after the decimal in the problem. So we're talking about this equation right here, not the answer. So if I look at my problem, there's no decimal here. Mm -hmm. I have one here, and there are two places. One, two. Mm -hmm. So there are two places after the decimal. So now I've done step two. Step three Put the decimal in your answer so you have the same number of digits after it. So I just said I had one, two places after the decimal. So my answer has to have one, two places. So I'm just underlining it so you can see what those two places mm -hmm. are. And then you put the decimal in. Yeah. That's it. Easy peasy. <laughs> okay, so you ignore, multiply, count how many come after it, and put it in your answer. So you do have to try this one now. So if you <laughs> need to look back at the steps... Um, we will give you the answer to this, but try it on your own and see how you do. It's not going to help you at all if you just keep going and write the answer down. <laughs> no one would Although, do that, right? I, yeah, nobody. <laughs> nobody. Okay, 
So there are six boards that measure eight tenths of a foot each. How long is that total? So again, you multiply six times eight tenths. So if you remember step one, ignore the decimal. So I just have to multiply six times eight, 48. Step two, how many places are after the decimal in my question? Mm. One, just the eight, eight tenths. Step three, figure, make sure I put that many places after the decimal in my answer. I'm just gonna underline it so you can see it and then put your decimal in, mm -hmm. that's it. So you should have gotten four and eight tenths is your answer. And of course, since it's a story problem, you must leave off to label it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is all. Now you just have to try and answer some on your own. And these ones all will require you to do a little more than just multiplying by tens and hundreds and yes. thousands. But you still go back, look at the steps if you need to, and then come back with these ready. So you should have eight total questions answered. Mm -hmm. And then you're getting questions. So good luck. <laughs>